our baby. We don't have children. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> but since I learned a lot playing Monopoly, then Kim and I created this game because we became financially free uh, in 1994. 94. She was 37 and I was 47. And people kept asking us, how did you do it? So we created this board game. And we followed the five things of the Midas Dutch, right? Yes. We, um, we actually we created the game because when we retired and were financially free, and, and people still think that, you know, before I go on, I just got to say, I love Sydney. I love the city. When uh, George W. was acting up, and we thought for the first time, I actually thought that I might have to leave the U.S., Sydney was at the top of our list. <laughs> and now that Obama's acting up, it might be the second time we're thinking about it. But you guys live in a fantastic city. Great coffee, great food, fun people. So all the people that are watching, the 3,000 people around the world, you really should put Australia on your travel list. But it's a fantastic place. And, uh, and, and I also want to say, I'm really heartfelt from Robert and I because Australia has always been so welcoming and so gracious to us when we started our business before Rich Dad. Uh, we started it in Australia. We launched Rich Dad Poor Dad first in Australia. It's really been a very, very special place in our hearts. And so coming back here is, as Robert said, it's like coming home. So really thank you guys so much. So that, well, back to the game. <laughs> what, I was, what I was gonna say is people kept asking us how we retired. And, when people think about retirement, they thought we had like millions and millions of dollars when we retired, and that wasn't the case. We had $10,000 a month coming in every month from our investments, primarily real estate at that time, but we only had $3,000 a month going out in living expenses. So we were financially free. And everybody asked, how did we do it? And we said, instead of us you know, traveling all over, the, all these cities all over the world, let's create it in a fun, entertaining, <coughs> way, so everything really on this board is exactly what we did to get out of the rat race and become financially free. Every one of these little deals, we did those deals, and sometimes we won and sometimes we learned. So anyway, the reason I wanted Kim to come and talk about this is, again, it goes to infinite returns, and Kim is always inspiring women to go for it. So just like anything else, as our rich dad said to me at least, don't ever use your own money. And when people say, well, I don't have money to start the project and all this, well, you know, it's always better to not think you have money anyway. It makes you smarter. So you want to tell us how you, how you raise the money for the game and all this? <laughs> yes. Um, you want the real story. Okay. The real story. Um, Robert and I were flying to... Where were we going? I think we were going to Bali. We were doing an event in Bali, and it was an entrepreneurial event, and we had just been working on the game. The game was still not quite, still in a beta testing form. We hadn't produced it yet. Um, we did all the numbers, realized what we were going to need, and at the time, Robert and I were working with our then rich dad's name was Frank, and Frank they call him the gray fox of Wall Street. Frank has taken about 68 companies public in his lifetime, a lot in the mining industries, oil industries, um, things like that. And so we had met Frank and we were working with him on a gold mine company that we were gonna take public. And he said, well, when you go to your next event, why don't you pitch this gold mine deal? And so we're learning about all of that and we're sitting on the plane and we've got the prospectus out and we're looking at it, we're talking about it, and then we went, well, if we could raise money for the gold mine deal, we should be able to raise money for the cash flow game. So I took the prospectus when I got to when we got to where we were, I made a copy of it, and I whited out the name of the company that we were pitching for, and I put in cash flow technologies <laughs> or rich dad. <laughs> And in front of this group, we said, if anybody would like to be interested in this game um, and investing in this game, this is what we're gonna do. And we basically painted the picture, told the story. There's always a story that goes with every investment. Um, and within 
a week, we had 10 people that had each invested um, $25,000. And uh, we, so we had a quarter of a million dollars, which allowed us to produce the game, which allowed us to start the marketing of the game. And we, every year, they would get a return on their money. And in about three years, this was the plan, in about three years, we were able to return all of their money with a premium um, so that they had a very nice return on investment, a very nice ROI. And that's how I started raising money. Um, it wasn't rocket science. It was simply, we've got an idea. As, as Robert was saying, you know, everybody's got a million dollar idea. We had a million dollar idea. And instead of using our own money, we were able to not only use other people's money, but they were able to make a good deal of money as a result of their investment in us. And that, those relationships are still, it's still priceless today, because it really is, it, it really is the, uh, the relationship thing. And that's how we did it. So the thing is, what you see now is this rich dad company we had zero dollars into it, and we're estimating how much money we've earned since 1997, and it's almost a half a billion dollars. So, the money just keeps pouring in. If Kim and I stop working, the money still comes in, because the, the business was designed that way. And so on the 18th and 19th of October, that's when Kim and I will be talking about how you design a business. So the money just keeps coming in, whether you work or not. But the reason we work is because our work's not done. We still have a job to do, we still have people to teach. But the money just keeps coming in. So this is one example of how an infinite return works. Zero in, and about $480 million comes back. But that's what financial intelligence is. That's what education should teach you. And instead, they teach you to go to school and get a job. And if you don't change that thought, you might think this is impossible. But it is possible. You just have to start understanding it. Just understand that it's possible in your life. That I just might be able to do this. Does that make sense?